Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video tutorial, I wanted to go over a mini map that I have in front of me. You can see it's pretty basic, but as I move through this maze or I move through the level, you can see the mini map is being updated with spots that I have uncovered or spots that are still concealed that I need to look at. And by hitting the tab key, I can bring it to the front of the screen or I can just have it in the corner. Now, we're not going to go through any code with this per, per se, because I don't feel like we actually need to do some coding. But what I do want to cover is some basic array information first. So let me load up that quick little presentation I have. And it is right here. So arrays in Game Maker Studio 2. Don't worry, this is not going to be advanced. You should be able to understand everything once we're done. And hopefully, if you haven't used arrays already, you'll come out with some working knowledge and how to use them in your games. So in Game Maker Studio 2, we have two basic types of arrays. We have our one dimension and then our two dimension. So a one dimension array, if you think about it, all it's going to be is a row and then associated with that row is going to be the value. So if we take that information and we make it into something visual, we would have something that looks like this, where index is going to be our row and then the values would be right next to it. So at index zero, we have the name Mickey, index one, we have Hershey, Jade, Gizmo, et cetera, et cetera. So if we were to code this in Game Maker Studio, it would look something like that. So you can see at the bottom, we have the variable names and the names at index zero is Mickey. And then I've messed this up, but that's fine. The names at index one is Jade. I should have made that uh, Hershey, et cetera. Okay, so we'll, we'll kind of skip that. A two dimensional array is the one that we actually care about in this video. So all we're doing here is we're adding an extra index onto our table. So what this means is it will look something like this, where we have our first index, which is zero, and then our second index, which is zero. So this could be rows and then columns and then the value. So you can see that at zero, zero, the value is gizmo. At zero, one, the value is 16. At one, zero, it's J, then two, etc., etc. Now, hopefully this code is right, because if we look at Game Maker Studio, the code that we would use to do this would be something like this. We're at zero, zero, the animal's name is Gizmo. At zero, one, he's 16 years old. And then Jade, who's two, and Charlie, four, etc. So that is the basic arrays that we have, and that's what we're going to be doing. The other thing I wanted to mention is with arrays, we just don't need to store strings or numbers and stuff like that. We could also store true or false. And this is kind of what we're going to do for our minimap, except we're going to take it one step further, where we're going to add in states. And all the states are going to do is it's just going to tell us whether it can draw um, a, a white square, a square, a dark gray square, or a uh, gray square itself. So let's actually switch back to Game Maker Studio. And the first thing I'm going to do is you can see I've kind of collapsed everything here. So the only things that we care about in this video are going to be our mini map stuff and the map location. Now, the first time I did this, uh, I used this object minimap, and I think it was a little bit too crazy, but I wanted to show it anyway. So I basically used Excel to draw out a map, and then with this information here, which is a 10 by 10, and we always start at zero with arrays, with this information here, I basically went through in code and chose a different state. So the states that I have are block, concealed, or discovered so these will just be drawing different colored squares and you can see i did actually go through all of them and uh yeah i did all of them and then um and then i decided there is a much better way to do this if i close this and i look at object minimap load you can see we only have one event and it's the create event and i'm going to maximize this guy here so in this create event, what we're doing is we're going to open a file and this file name is determined by the variables on this particular guy right here. You can see underneath variable definitions, if I close it and bring it back up, you can see that we have the file name and then our starting location X and Y of our player. Um, if we switch back to code, you can see that we're going to open this file and then this bunch of information here, all we're going to do is read the file character by character and just assign the different states. So if it finds an X, we're gonna assign a block state. If it finds an O, we're gonna say it's concealed. If it finds any other character, guess what? We're just gonna mark it as discovered. And like I said, these different states, all they do is draw different squares on the screen. 
So once this code is done, all I do at the end is I just assign it into some global variables. The reason I'm using a global variable is in case I wanted to say switch rooms or I wanted to use it in a different object and this object gets destroyed. It's stuck in the global space so I don't have to worry about bringing this object back in to read that map. Now the map itself, if we look underneath included files, these are the two maps that I'm talking about. So if I load in, let's say room regular, and I go down to my instances, and I wanna make sure I get this uh, minimap load. If I bring him up and I go to variables, you can see right here where you have a map.txt. So if I right click and say open externally, this is the map that gets read in, and it's the map that gets drawn in front of us. So you can see it's made up of X's and O's, and anytime it finds an O, it's a light gray square. Anytime it finds an X, it's a dark gray square. So if we change any of this and we save it, it's automatically gonna update. So actually let's close this and close this. And if we hit F5, we should see what we had at the start. So you can see we have our little um, symbol here. And when I go through the map, all the squares are turning white. Now the one thing that this does not do, and that would be something more advanced, is draw the room based off of that map file. Now I'm not doing that, I just drew this out by hand just to match the map itself. Now one thing that you may have seen is, okay, so now we've talked about how to load that information in, and we're loading it into a 2D array. How do we get it to display here at the bottom? Well, that's pretty simple. All I'm doing in this uh, object map is I'm just loading the information in and then I create a mini map draw object. And if we close this and bring up this draw guy, and you can see we have a create draw GUI, ignore the tab for now. But in the create event, we just make sure that we get the GUI width and height and we set our spacing. Now the spacing is very, is very important. It's gonna tell us how big to draw the squares. The GUI width and height is gonna be basically the width and height of our camera that we're using. And with that information, we can go and we can get the number of rows in our mini map and the number of columns in our mini map. Like I said, I stored everything in the global uh, namespace. So I'm grabbing it from the global namespace. And then I go through and I grab all the information I need. I need to know, let's say, where the player is. And then wherever the player is, I'm just changing the state of that particular variable or particular, let's say, row and column to the number three or whatever discovered is. I'm not sure. We could look it up, but I don't really think that's needed. And then, and then all I'm doing is I'm writing that minimap back into the global variable space. And I'm doing that because I did an update to it. So I need to make sure that it goes back into the global state. So if I switch rooms or whatever, it's already updated. Now, uh, I will skip the focus part. We'll come back to that. But this is just a little bit of math to find out the biggest um, X and Y position we have. And then we basically loop through each row and each column. And depending on our GUI height and width, and the maximum size, we are going to draw a rectangle based off of whatever the state is going to be at that row and column. So if the state is concealed, we get gray. If it's discovered, we get white. If it's blocked, we get dark gray. So all of this code here, and you will be able to have access to this, all this code is doing is drawing this little portion here. Now you can see if I hit tab, it puts it up in front of me and then I can go through my level and I can hit tab again and it goes down. Now that is very easy to do. All I'm doing is I have a variable called is focused and I set it to false. When I press my tab key, I just change that is focused to either true or false. I just change it to the opposite of whatever it is. And then based off of the opposite, I either set my spacing to say 16 or I go down here and I set my spacing to four. And how we get that animation is I'm basically just lerping. I'm going from 16 to four over time. And the other thing I'm really doing here is I'm changing the width and the height. So that's gonna be the location that the map gets drawn in. Okay, so I won't go over that part, but it's in the code, it's pretty easy to do. And I think the main part is gonna be the mini map itself. So how this all works is you can see that we have a location where we start. 
but how do we update this location here? We, we haven't done anything. Um, in our minimap load, you can see that we do have a location X and Y, but all that does is it gets updated once, and that's where our player starts. Well, we have this little handy guy called map location right here. And all this does is whenever the player collides with it, we update the global X and Y position of our location. When we do that, automatically the map draw is going to grab that location and set it to discovered and then update the map. And that's how we're able to traverse through this maze here is because once I load up the map here, you'll actually notice that all these different squares, they're actually covered in the map location object. If we look up the room regular and I come down to map locations and I zoom in, all these different ones, you can see that they're all covering up that particular square. If I double click on one, each of them is associated with an X and a Y coordinate in our grid. So at this one, whatever one I clicked on, his X and Y coordinate is 5 and 2. Now I will say the very first thing I did, which is the, I wrote it all out by hand, it was actually very useful because I could come down here and I could say, you know what, uh, position, let's say 6 and position 6, I want it to be opened. So I was able to easily say what positions the lo those locations were in. Now this does work for things like this, which is a maze, but you know what? You could also make it work for things that look like this, where it's a little bit of a dungeon. So if I hit F5 here, you can see that this is a small map. It's a two by two. But as I go through my dungeon and I collide with, let's say the map location object, that thing gets updated automatically. So this could be in different rooms or it could be a totally different part of your level. But you can see that every time that we collide with something like that, it gets updated. And like I said, it's super small, so it's hard to draw a two by two square. You can see that each one of these locations, if I double click on them, once again, they are associated with X and Y locations and those X and Y locations are part of my map. Now I should say that this also was a different map from our first one. And if we check out, I believe it's this guy right here. Yes, so this guy is our mini map load. If we look at the variables, he is loading map dungeon.txt. Once again, that's just in the included files. So if we take a look at the dungeon here, you can see it's a two by two square and they're both just, they're open. If we were to change one of them to say X, then we close that and now we run our game. Hopefully we should get a different color here. And when I bring it up, you can see that that one is dark gray. Now I didn't do any coding. So when I go over that location, it will probably change to white, which is 100% fine. That's because we just didn't code it to do anything different. So as you can see, this is kind of a pretty cool system that gives us uh, a way that we could easily use something like notepad to draw out our map. And then our map will be drawn to the GUI layer which is automatically going to be uh, whatever space that we have set our camera to. So starting in the top left is zero, zero, and the bottom right would be whatever our camera width and height is going to be, and it's always going to be like that. So hopefully, I know we didn't really cover too much of the code. I just want to give a general overview of it and hopefully give you enough information to start making your own mini maps. And I didn't really want to get into surfaces and stuff like that, but I feel like this is a extremely good start. And yeah, I really hope, uh, I really hope that Facebook goes away, but I really hope that you enjoyed this and uh, I can't wait to get back into coding some videos. A huge shout out to Jean, Paul, Pistol Giant, Victor, and Wayne for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. Uh, if you like what you see, please give a like, leave some comments, help get the name out. Anything can be possible. All right. Thank you very much.